How to avoid compassion burnout. I got a message yesterday from someone who particularly mentioned, and I don't know if you ever heard this before or said it yourself before, that I'm too scared to ask for help because everyone's always coming to me for help and everyone thinks that I'm so strong, I don't want to show weakness. And immediately one of the things that can't come to mind for me is uh, compassion burnout um, and how to avoid it. The first time I ever heard about this uh, term before is when I did a, a keynote speaking engagement um, for the Manitoba Nurses Union. And nurses, as a practice, uh, you know, experience a lot of compassion burnout. They spend so much time caring for other people that it's easy to neglect caring for yourself. And the same topic comes up when I've spoken before to first responders, policemen, firemen, you know, um, anybody, you know, work in the ambulance, like people who are looking after others experience compassion burnout. And mothers are a good example of that as well. You spend so much time looking after the family, the household, the children, that you tend to neglect your own self. In my keynote, The Hero Mindset, I talk about uh, three things, which are hero moments, hero decisions, and hero actions, where you accept responsibility, take things one step at a time, and never give up. And the premise is that each of us can become a hero in our own movie. And so when I've spoken, for, for example, to nurses before and first responders, and the same conversation goes out there to the mothers, is that so often you'll spend so much time trying to become a hero to someone else, to the hero, a hero to the person you're, you're responding to, a hero to the person you're trying to save, that you forget to become a hero to your own self. You know, to become a hero in your own movie can and does mean prioritizing your own self, your own life first. Because if you put your own oxygen mask on, then you actually have the capacity to go out and look after others. And so three tips to think about how to avoid compassion burnout. Um, I kind of just, I just mentioned that one, number one. I actually wanted that to be number three, but putting on your own oxygen mask first is, is very important. Uh, if you don't look after yourself, you won't be able to look after anyone else. Number two is to learn how to say no more often. You know, it's easy to continually say yes to accommodate other people, to help other people. You know, uh, that can be yet saying yes to a, another shift, a double shift if you're working, um, if you're working late. Like I said, as, uh, in the field as a first responder or the nurse's station. You can say yes to skipping your lunchtime. You can say um, yes to, you know, taking on another assignment. Um, you can say yes to all of these things you don't want to do because you're too afraid of disappointing somebody, uh, because you want to be strong, because you want to be viewed as the hero in someone else's eyes versus be, um, being coming a hero in your own eyes for your own self. So putting on your own oxygen mask and saying no more often is uh, really important. And the third piece, uh, which I mentioned in other videos before, is to remember the three A's of admit, ask, and accept. When you're struggling and you need help, the first step is to admit to yourself that you have a problem, that you need help. Your biggest barrier to overcome is going to be yourself. So the first step before you can even get the help that you would like, that you want, and that you need is to admit to yourself that you have a problem, that you are struggling. And that's okay because everyone does. The best of the best still need help. First responders, as an example, who help other people still need help themselves. Although we want to feel like super Superman and superheroes, we aren't that um, mystical character in real life. We are human. So admit to yourself that you have a problem. The second step is to ask. Um, ask somebody for help. Nobody knows you're struggling unless you say so. So it doesn't mean you have to like put it on social media, but you got to reach out to somebody. Nobody knows you're struggling unless you say so. And the third piece is to actually um, accept the help. So if you've admitted to yourself, you've asked for the help, that, and the help is in front of you, you've got to accept it. That means if someone offers to have a chat with you, take them up on that. Go have a chat. Um, if someone offers, offers a suggestion of like going for a walk to clear your mind, stop what you're doing and actually go do that. If it means you have to go consult with a doctor, then it means actually following through with the appointment, not canceling it. Admit, ask, and accept. 
I feel like partially, to be honest with you, I might have scattered my thoughts because I just wanted to like hit record, get this one out there. I felt like this one was kind of calling this morning. Um, but as a quick recap, you know, how to avoid compassion burnout, especially if you feel like you're someone who's always been the strong one for someone else. Um, the first piece I, I talked about is putting on your own oxygen mask first. Um, so often you want to become a hero to everyone else. So you forget to become a hero to yourself. The second step was um, to learn how to say no more often, which will help create the boundaries that you're looking for. So you can actually can prioritize yourself and your own health. And then the third piece is a three A's. Admit, ask, and accept. Admit you have a problem, ask for help, and then accept it when it's in front of you. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, we're only a few days away from uh, October 10th. October 10th being uh, World Mental Health Day. So my hope is, uh, like I said, these videos be a bit of a build up towards that day, helping to continue the conversation around mental health and especially mental resilience. You know, these are the uh, basic uh, tips, tools, and strategies that I've you know, applied in my own life before to help get myself out of depression, overcome post-Olympic depression, you know, learn how to walk again, build a life as an entrepreneur after leaving sport and also maintain my health and resilience throughout COVID. So if you would like to learn a bit more about any of that stuff, uh, I'd love for you to check out kevinremple.com. You can download the resilience toolbox checklist there. Uh, quick tips and strategies to remember about developing your mental resilience. Uh, there's a video about the Resilience Toolbox, the program I created through COVID about all the techniques and strategies that I've done uh, or applied in my life to develop this mental resilience. And uh, above all, I hope that uh, you found this helpful. Um, please like and share with anybody else thinks that could benefit. And I'll see you guys again in uh, the next video. Peace.